Hey, Dave here from Excel Jet. So today I'm gonna to do some training on VLOOKUP. VLOOKUP is a really powerful and flexible function that you'll see used everywhere in Excel and for good reason. It's a really powerful way to retrieve information from a table and bring it back into the worksheet where you want it. So you can use VLOOKUP in a variety of different ways. Today I'm gonna to look at five different situations that you can use VLOOKUP. We'll look first at how you can use VLOOKUP to do an exact match and you would do this, for example, if you have an employee ID and you want to use that ID to pull information about a particular employee, like to pull all the details back out. Uh, we'll also look at how to use VLOOKUP for approximate match. And we're gonna look at how you would use VLOOKUP to assign a grade based on a test score, and also how you would use VLOOKUP to figure out the right commission rate based on a certain sales number. And then we're gonna take a look at how you can use VLOOKUP to group information into arbitrary buckets. You don't see VLOOKUP used this way as often, but it's a really powerful way to classify data based on your own rules. And finally, I'll show you how you can use VLOOKUP to combine information in two different tables. So maybe you've got a customer table and an order table, and you wanna bring that information together so that you can do some sort of analysis or reporting. All right, let's go do the training. Okay, here we are in Excel, and I've got five VLOOKUP examples ready to go. And I'm gonna take you through these pretty fast because we have videos on our site and in an upcoming course on Excel formulas that cover each one of these topics in more detail. And I don't wanna to get too bogged down in the detail in this training because it'll just seem too slow and boring. My goal here is just to give you an overview of how you can use VLOOKUP in different situations. So the first example is a table with employee data. And you can see that we have a unique ID over here in the first column for each employee. And then we have first name, last name, email department, and start date. We're going to set up VLOOKUP to match on the ID over here that we put into this yellow cell and we'll extract information for that ID into these cells below. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna name the data in the table and I'll just name it data. And I'm using the name box up here to do that. And now I'm gonna name this cell here ID. And you'll see that uh, we already had this customer data and we're gonna to get to that in a minute, but we now have a range called data and one called ID. And this will make our formulas much easier to read and copy. I use this a lot when I'm entering formulas in Excel because it really speeds things up and it reduces errors. So now we're ready to type in our first VLOOKUP uh, function. And to do that, I'll just type in VL, which is enough to match and hit tab. And then Excel will give us the arguments that we need. For a lookup value, we're going to use ID. And for the table array, we'll use data, the name that I just created. And for column index, we want a value from column two. We'll use two. And finally, we get to this confusingly named argument called range lookup, which is optional and defaults to true or one, which means approximate match. This is kind of unfortunate because it makes VLOOKUP confusing to use. Most people in the beginning especially only want to do an exact match. And so my recommendation is to start with exact match. Um, in this case, that would be zero or false. And then add the approximate match later once you understand what you're doing. Because you'll get strange results if you use an approximate match and you don't mean to. So with all that in there, I can just hit return. We'll get an NA error, which is what VLOOKUP gives you when it can't find the value. And in this case, the reason it can't find it is because I didn't give it, I didn't put a value in the ID cell. So we'll put an 869 for Julie Irons. And you can see now we get Julie's first name. So to fill in the rest of these formulas, because I'm using range names here, I can just copy this down and then come back and change the index number. In this case, we want three. And then we want four for email. And then we want five for the department. And finally, we want six for the start date. You can see we get kind of a, we get a number for the start date. That's because it's formatted in the general format because I copied it down. So we'll wanna switch this to a date format. And now we have what we need. And you'll see that if I uh, type in 622, we'll match on 
Jonathan. Same thing, I'll just make this a little wider. Type in another one, 867. We'll get Erica. All right, so that's VLOOKUP with exact match um, in an employee table. Our next example is going to be using VLOOKUP with approximate match to calculate, or I should say, look up a commission and then calculate the commission amount in this table over here based on a sales number that's in this column here. Now to use approximate match with VLOOKUP, you must make sure that your, your table array is sorted. And you can see in this case, these values do go from lowest to highest. So uh, I'm gonna start off again by naming this range. I'm gonna call it COM table for commission table. And that's probably all I'll need. And now we'll enter our first VLOOKUP function, VL, hit tab. The lookup value is the sales amount. The table array is this table I just named. You'll see that Excel fills in the name for me automatically. And the uh, column index number in this case is two. We want the commission uh, that's in the second column of the table, so two. And in this case, um, we want approximate match. I'm gonna enter a one. It's not required to, to have this argument here because it's optional and it will default to one, but I kind of like having it there just to remind myself that I put it there on purpose. And you can see we get 6%. And the way this works is that VLOOKUP will look at this value. It will run through these values until it finds one that's too big. In this case, 175 here is bigger. And then it will drop back to the value before that and then look up the rate. And that's how we get 6%. This should work fine if I just double click the fill handle here. We get a commission rate for all of the sales numbers. And to calculate the commission, we can just take the sales times the commission. And I'm going to double click. We have a commission for each person. And if for some reason one of these values change, if this became 5%, which wouldn't make sense, then it will automatically calculate new values. I'm going to undo that. You can see that one there changed. All right, and that's using VLOOKUP for approximate match for commissions. In our next example, we're gonna use VLOOKUP to assign a grade. And you can see that uh, we already have a little grade key over here that tells us what the grade should be based on a score. And again, these are sorted, and that's important for approximate match. And we also actually have a grade already assigned. And if we look at that formula, you can see that it's you know a rather complicated nested if formula. And I actually have some other videos that show you how to build one of these, but we're not gonna get into it today. This uh, formula is already set up so that it calculates the right grade. What we'll do is we'll use VLOOKUP in this column here, and then you can compare and see that it's assigning the same grade. To start off again, I'm gonna take this table here and give it a name. I'm gonna call it grade key. You could use any name you want as long as it's a legal range name. And then we'll go ahead and put in VLOOKUP. VL is enough to do it, tab. The lookup value is gonna be the score, which is actually an averaged value. The table array again is our grade key. And then we have to specify a column index number, that'll be two. So we wanna get the grade from the second column here in the table. And again, in this case, we wanna use one for approximate match. Close the parentheses, hit return, and you can see we get a B. And if I double click to bring this down, you'll see that we have the same grade in each case. So if you look at this formula, the if statement works just fine, but you can see it's quite a bit harder to read and understand. And if you look at the VLOOKUP formula, you can see that it's much simpler and much easier. So one difference here I wanna point out quickly is that when you use a nested if in this case, you can see that we have the actual threshold 64, 73 and so on, actually baked right into the formula. And that means if we want to adjust any of those, we're gonna to have to go edit that formula and copy it down. In contrast, VLOOKUP doesn't have any of that uh, logic or scores embedded in it. All of that sits over here in this table, which means that if you change a value here, if we make this 86, for example, then that would automatically give people A's, and you can see one of them here, uh, dynamically. Un undo that just to keep it clear. All right, so that's how to use VLOOKUP, again, with an approximate match to assign grades. 
In the next example, we have another list of employees. And this time, again, we have a list of departments. And what we want to do is use VLOOKUP to group these departments into two groups, group A and group B. So group A includes sales and marketing. Group B includes fulfillment, support, and engineering. Now you could do this again using a nested if statement, but VLOOKUP can provide a really clean solution here as well. So to use VLOOKUP to assign groups like this, we need to set up a table that allows us to match on the department. And you can see I've actually got this set up backwards. It seems like the way you would do it, but this isn't gonna work because we can't match on A and B because they don't exist in our table. We need to match on the department itself. So what I'll do is I'll select this table and I'm gonna hold the shift key down. And now I'm just gonna drag that over and we've got our rearranged table that we can use. All right, and so what I'll do first, as always, is I'm gonna name this table. I'm gonna call it department table. And now I've got what I need to do the lookup. So type in VL for VLOOKUP tab. Lookup value is gonna be the department. Table array will be this table down here. You can see it gets filled in. And the uh, column index number is two. And in this case, it is an exact match. So that means we want to use zero or false. We'll just use zero. And we get group B. And now we have a group for each department. And again, this is a dynamic solution. So if for some reason we decided that we weren't using A and B, but instead we had a group red and a group blue, which makes no sense, but bear with me we can easily change the grouping. And we could even, for example, take fulfillment and just put it into the red group. All right, on to example five. In this last example, I'm gonna show you how you can use VLOOKUP to combine information in two tables. Here we have some order uh, information, and you can see we have a date, customer ID, product, and a total. And in this last tab, we have some customer information. We've got first and last name, street, city, and so on. And we have a customer ID. So we can use this customer ID since it sits over here to the left. We can use it to extract all the information in this table. And back in our order information, we also have the same customer ID. So we have everything we need. I'm going to use a little trick here to make entering the VLOOKUP formulas easier. So notice that we're going to start extracting last, then first, then street, then city. This is exactly the same order that the information appears in this table. And this is the second column, third column, fourth column, and so on. So to, to make things a little bit easier, I'm gonna put some numbers up here and I'm just gonna use the fill handle to get them to increment. And then I'll use those numbers in my VLOOKUP formula to make it easier to enter the same formula in all cells. And one last thing that I wanna show you is that we actually have a range called customer data that includes all the data in the customer tab, customers tab. So this already exists. I'll use that when I build the VLOOKUP formulas. So let's get started on that. We wanna do uh, VL for VLOOKUP. Hit tab, lookup value is customer ID. The table array will be, uh, I can start typing it and you can see that Excel matches. I can just hit a tab then. And column index number, we're gonna get that from here and I need to do, I need to actually change the reference to lock the row but leave the column alone. So we'll use F4 and the first time I get it, I'll get a fully absolute reference. The second time I press F4, I'll get the row uh, number locked and the column is not locked, it's relative, so that'll work. And then for range lookup, we're doing an exact match. So we'll want to use zero or true. I'll use zero. And I forgot to do one more thing here, which is I forgot to change the lookup value so that we want to, in this case, we're going to copy this formula across this table. So we want to lock the column in this case. So again, I will use F4. First time is fully absolute. The next time I use F4, we'll get the uh, row number locked. And the next time we'll have the column number locked. That's what I want. And we'll just close the parentheses. And now we get brown. And when I drag this across, we should get all of the data for, in this case, Tracy Brown. And I can just double click it. And now we have it all. So you can see as we go down, 
we have the same formula in all of these cells. The only thing changing is the number up here that we're referring to in the formula. Now, one thing you may want to do when you've joined two tables like this is you may want to get rid of the formulas because you probably don't want these to change. I mean, it depends, but you probably don't want them to change once you've done the lookup. So to do that, you can just use the normal paste special method. So in this case, I'll just select all of these formulas. I'll copy them to the clipboard. I'll use the keyboard shortcut Control Option and V. That'll bring up paste special, and then I'll click values and OK. And now you see that there are no more formulas left. This is all just text. All right, so that's a fifth example of how to use VLOOKUP. In this case, we're using exact match and we're joining information from two different tables. All right, so I hope you enjoyed that training on VLOOKUP. Like I said earlier, VLOOKUP is a really powerful and useful function. And if you're not used to using it, it can really change the way that you think about solving problems in Excel. Now, the worksheet that I used in the training is attached below this video, so make sure you download uh, the worksheet and give it a try. And also, as always, if you have any comments or questions, just leave a comment below this video. We'll see you soon.